Hello, in this video we are going to go over the solution of the problem 947. Most stones removed with same row or column and we are going to use DFS. Let's see the description of the problem. It says, on a 2D plane we place n stones at some integer coordinate points. Each coordinate point may have at most one stone. A stone can be removed if it shares either the same row or the same column as another stone that has not been removed. And at the end, the goal is to return the largest possible number of stones that can be removed. For example, we are given a list that has six stones like this one. And each one of them has its own location. For example, a stone three has the location X20, Y30. So X20, Y30 is the stone three. Okay, let's start writing the code. The first thing that we are going to do is to define a dictionary that shows all of the connections between these stones. So we are going to call it graph, an empty dictionary at the beginning, and then we are going to use a for loop and say for i x in enumerate of stones. Let me just also print i here and we say for j in range of i. For the index j, we are going to read the location of that stone and say y equals stones at j. Now I'm going to say if x0 equals y0 or x1 equals y1, it means that they are sharing a row or a column. In that case, I'm going to add those things to my dictionary. Let's say if I not in graph, it's not first time, it's not a part of dictionary. We say graph I equals J. If it is already part of the dictionary, just say graph I dot append J. We do the same thing for j and say if j not in graph, graph j equals i and else graph j dot append i. Okay, let me just print the graph that we can see what we just created. Let me run this problem. This is the final graph that is created. And let's see what we have. 1 and 0 are connected. And 1 and 4 are connected. So you see 1 is the key. So 1 is connected to 0 and 4. So 0 is connected to 1 and 2. 0, key 0 is connected to 1 and 2. A stone 2 as a key 2 is connected to 3 and 0. Connected to 3 and 0. And so on. So for each stone, I have that as the key, and then I have a list that shows the corresponding stones that are sharing a row or sharing a column. After creating the graph, we are going to start DFS. And for doing that, I'm gonna start with an empty set and call it scene equals empty set. Also, I'm gonna return a number that is the maximum number of stones to be removed. So I'm gonna call that at the beginning as answer and zero and then we start the for loop and say for i in range of lens of stones so i'm gonna visit each stone once and for doing that if i not in scene i add that to my stack and say stack equals i also i add that to my scene so add i now I start a while loop, say while stack, then we pop a stone from the stack and say node equals stack dot pop. The next thing we are going to look at around this node and see where are the connections are and that graph we just created above is very helpful here. We are going to say for neighboring node in graph, graph node, for example, graph Three, we are going to look at the neighborings for three. And if neighboring node not in scene, so I add that to my stack, 
stack append. Also, I add that to my scene. When we are going one forward, so in that case, I'm going to update the answer and say, okay, this is one stone that I can remove. Answer plus equals one. Okay. And at the end, I'm going to return answer. Okay. Let's run this. Okay, five. So for this problem, it is possible for this example, at most we can remove five stones. For example, I can remove zero, two, three, five, four. But when I come back to one, I already removed zero. So it is not possible to remove one. So at most I can remove five stones. The time complexity of this problem is n to the power of two, because first we created this graph and for doing that, we visited each stone first here. And for each stone, then we try to see the connections to the other stones and we put everything in a graph. So in a worst case scenario, that would be the n to the power of two. Also for each stone, we are going to conduct DFS. So for each stone order of n and inside that we are performing DFS and that would be also n to the power of two. As a result, the time complexity is the n to the power of two. And the space complexity is also n to the power of two because we needed to create that graph. And for that graph, we recorded all of the stones as keys. And also we recorded all of the connections. So we, in a worst case scenario, we need n to the power of two spots to record all of the informations for the graph. Okay, this is the solution of the problem 947. And thank you so much for watching this video.